Okay, welcome to my iPad painting tutorials. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint a misty scene with some trees and fields, along with a strong warm color in the sky. Now, I sometimes can't decide whether it's a sunset or a sunrise, so I'll let you be the judge of that. Maybe you can comment in the comment section, let me know which you feel it should be. So I'm going to break it down and make it as easy as I possibly can for you to follow. So I've got an A4 canvas open within the app Procreate on the iPad. If you're using a different tablet or a different app, you can probably translate the instructions to those. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected some colors that you can see here. If you look down in the video description, there is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download that color file for free. In addition to that, the hexadecimal codes, which you'll find down if you go in this section to value, the hexadecimal codes can be typed in there one at a time. Again, they're down in the description. The color will appear up here and you can just piece it together yourself and create your own color palette. In terms of the brushes, within the brushes, I go to the airbrushing section and the top of the list, not down here where it says soft airbrush, it's just the soft brush that I use as well as the medium brush. In addition to that, I'll be using the, the artistic brush set and I'll be using the hearts brush. This is gonna be for the tree textures amongst other things. If you do follow along with this tutorial and you're pleased with your results, then make sure to tag me on Instagram. Again, there's a link for that in the description, or you can join my Facebook group. There's over like 30,000 members there now, where people share their work and get feedback from both myself and other members. It's a really great community, so come and join us there. So that being said and done, let's get started. So on this canvas, we're gonna to go to our colors first of all. We've got this first color. That is the main background sky, so beyond the clouds, We've got this light blue color that's gonna show through. I'm gonna keep everything on separate layers. So we're gonna to go to the layer section, press the plus symbol, create another layer. So on this second layer, we're gonna to go to our brushes, the soft brush. We're gonna put the first size at about 5% and the opacity quite low at 10%. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna to go to the second color. And I'm going to start with this slightly brighter, more vibrant color to build up some textures initially, but quite lightly. So I'm gonna leave something of the center area quite open, but we're certainly gonna close it down nearer the edges. So I'm doing it in a circular motion and also a tapping motion. So it's a mixture of the two. Take time on this section. Let's just see if we can get some basic shapes in and then we'll reduce the size of the brush in a moment and see if we can start to refine some of this. But we just need some background shapes. It takes a little while, we're doing it gradually, but that's okay. And I'm not too bothered if I add a little bit too much initially, I can always remove it. And when we get down into about two thirds of the way down, that is roughly where the horizon line is gonna be in this composition. So I'm just gonna do some straight lines there because I'm gonna go over it with some lighter and warmer colors anyway. So it's just a way of marking out where that horizon line is gonna be. And we'll just continue building this up. Now this is just the, the background for the dark clouds. And then we're gonna go over that in a moment with a darker color. So before I do that, I'm just gonna reduce it down to about 3%. And I'm just going to start now gradually building in some smaller shapes along the edges, some little breakaway tufts, certainly in this top section, because it's a lot closer to us. So we're going to notice those little separations and little smaller pieces, less so in the background. You tend to find that things sort of stretch out and connect up when they're a little bit more distant, but certainly here when it's a little bit closer, you'll start to see this sort of breaking apart and little fragmented pieces on it. And we could even turn it down a little bit more, so down into the 2%, and then we could start adding the suggestion of some edges. Now, if you're not particularly confident with clouds, you don't need to exactly copy what I'm doing. I'm showing you the general process from how to construct it and the stages, but it is the kind of texture that you're going to have to practice with, or if you want to find a photograph that you want to exactly copy, then you can do that. But even then, I would suggest that you just give yourself a little bit of a break and allow it to organically change and become its own thing. So we're just starting to build it up in some areas now. So it 
condenses and becomes a darker section as you can see here and keeping that lumpy bumpy shapes and areas And then I'm coming over to a slightly lighter area again, allowing a little cluster to build up the darkness. I've not really changed the opacity on the brush. I'm just taking the time to do it more manually. And I don't even know how many brush strokes I'm going to be doing here. It's going to be a lot. So settle in. You know, I don't, I don't really believe that a nice image or a good piece of art is something you can rush. So take the time, relax, enjoy the process. Let it build up gradually. You're going to be much more satisfied if you've really taking the time. And also when you slow down, you get more opportunity to actually observe what's going on in the image and make those adjustments as you go along. I think if you're rushing at it a little bit too much, then really you're just not giving yourself the, the chance to actually observe opportunities really, I guess. So in addition to adding that tone, we can take all the, or rather the brush that we're using and we can apply it to the eraser by long pressing on that eraser. We can then go onto the arrays and you can see that it's also on soft brush. It won't necessarily be on the same setting, so you might want to reduce that down. So 2% size again, and yeah, about 15% because we want it a bit stronger if we want to actually remove some sections. So I'm just going in now and I'm just articulating some more gaps. Maybe just sharpen them up a little bit. And I'm still creating these textures, these tufts. Now some of these clouds are going to condense into a really thick accumulation of clouds so it's not going to allow the light to glow through it quite as much. It's really going to block out the light. So as we get further down we're going to have a narrowing, a con constriction of the shape. So imagine this cluster and maybe that cluster. When you look at it from a distance it might just become m almost more of a line it becomes thinner, they seem to sort of merge together like this, and you get that slightly different kind of effect. That's not to say that you, you will st still get gaps, so we'll go to the eraser again, and again, I'm just gonna create some more gaps. Maybe I'll even sharpen that up more, so with the eraser, I'm gonna turn it to the bottom end of 2%, and I'm really just going to precisely move some of the pigment out of the way, some of the color. I say pigment, I mean, it's not really pigment in that sense. I tend to think traditionally, about digital art, I, I, I relate it to my experience in traditional mediums. Okay, so in addition to that, I might also go around some of these edges. And if I just zoom in a little bit with this eraser, I'm just going around and I'm just redefining some of these edges. So I might start to see potential now for some interesting shapes. And I can just go in and just further exaggerate some of those little bumps and curves and whatever it is that I'm starting to see that looks good. And because you're just removing some of the, the color that was there, you're not gonna go wrong with the color because all you're doing is revealing the light blue that's in the background. It's much better to use the eraser and reveal through the colors that are underneath. So, so far, Really, we've only used two colors. We've just used the background color, which is just a fill, and then we've just used the one color so far for the clouds. We're gonna go back to my brush again, and now that I've started to define that a little bit more, I can start making some more solid decisions about things that I want to solidify up a little bit, more of a sense of being, you know, a definite shape. And we can just start to build on that, really exaggerate it. And I'm just going to start moving across here. We've got a darker blue that we're yet to use. We'll do that on a separate layer. But I can get most of the way, really, with just one colour. I'm just going to fast forward through this process a little bit, unless there's something particular I feel you need to know. So again, as you come down here, just remember to keep the shapes a bit flatter, more elongated. As you come up here, you're gonna get bigger, more dramatic shapes. Okay, I'm going to start with the darker color now. So 
We'll start with a new layer, go to our colors, pick the third color along. I'm not going to change the brush settings, so it's still a soft brush, a 2% size and 10% opacity. And I'm just going to start using it to really ramp up the darkness in some areas. So I can really go in and just create some separation, even within the dark areas like this, for example, I can go in there and I can start to fragment that up a little bit more. So the overall first impression is still going to be that it's dark compared to other bits, but even that is going to have some, some breaks and some fragmenting. We could turn, if you're feeling confident, you could turn the opacity up. We'll put it at 20%. And again, if you're wanting to use the eraser, most of the erasing probably is gonna be best done on that previous layer, because we've not added a great deal onto that second layer. So to go back and further refine the gaps, you need to go back to layer two again. So that's what I'm doing. Again, it's still on a low brush size, so it's 2% on the brush size. And I'm gonna put it up to 20% on the strength. And I'm just gonna really sharpen up some of those gaps a little bit. If there's already an area where, you know, we're starting to get a sense of a gap, you can just go in there and again, in a slightly broken way, you can just add some points where the light is really escaping through the most, but it doesn't need to be consistent. You don't need to fill the entire thing in. I'm just finding some of the lightest areas and adding a few even brighter gaps. Try not to think about it in terms of adding color because it's not, it's just revealing the color, isn't it? Turn it down a little bit more back down to the 15%, finding it a little bit oversensitive and re you know revealing a little bit too quickly. I mean, just because I, I set the, the pressure at a certain level, you may find that your hand naturally is a little lighter or a little heavier. So I set the, the general sense of where you should be, but if you need to adjust things a little bit to suit your hand and your technique, then feel free to do that. Don't struggle sticking rigidly to what I'm showing you. If it isn't working for you, you've got to adapt things for you as well. Now this is gonna seem like slow process. Now I've spent about half an hour on this stage. Now I have sped it up a little bit for the benefit of the video, obviously, but it is a time consuming aspect. It, it just does take time. But if you take that time, I think that the overall effect will look better for it in the end, but just be prepared, settle in, get it done properly. Okay, so I'm gonna create another layer, but I'm gonna put it behind layer two. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna to go to that brightest color at the end. And I'm still gonna use the soft brush, but I'm gonna turn it up to about 15% size, but I'm gonna put it low on the opacity at about 10%. And I'm just gonna start bringing in a little bit of that light color, and it's really gonna bring out the brightness for some of those gaps a little bit more as well. So I've just gone over it a few times there. And if I show you the difference now, because you probably you might look at it and think, well, it doesn't look much different, but if you remove it, you can see it just by tapping it on, tapping it off, you can see it's illuminating and giving that, you know, more exaggerated light effect now. So I think that works. Go back to our top layer and we'll create another layer. We'll go back to our colors and we've used the first three colors. Now we're gonna use the fourth color. And I'm going to turn the brush size down to about 8% and we're gonna keep it low at the 10% opacity and I'm just going to start now introducing this warm color. I'm just gonna go over it a few times there at the bottom. And maybe I'll just start to tentatively bring it up a little bit into our scene. Now I can allow it to go over the gaps a little bit if there's gaps down there, but I don't wanna do that too much. It's okay for it to create a glow, but most of the light is going to be reflecting off the, the cloud or illuminating through the cloud. So you don't wanna overdo it over the top of the gap. So we're, we're roughly aiming for the actual cloud itself. So I'm just placing it, going over that bottom section of the cloud, allowing it to build up that warm color. 
Down here is going to be other features, so don't worry about that. And then I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush to about 4%. In fact, let's reduce it even more. Let's put it at 3%. And I'm just going to add touches of this warm glow on the underside of some of these top shapes. Now, it's still on that low opacity, so we're just nudging it in a little bit. We don't want to overdo that. But you do want to create the sense that it's picking up at the bottom edge of some of these clouds. I'm just ramping up some of this colour down here as well now. And we're starting to get the kind of effect, but we can certainly push this a little bit further yet. Now I may later on go in and refine this sky a little bit. I've started to come up with some areas that I quite like, but it's the kind of thing that although I've spent half an hour on it, you could easily spend, you know, double that time or three times that amount of time. If you want to go in and just keep refining it, then that's absolutely fine to do. I'll get to the overall effect and then maybe I'll do that a little later. So I'm going to create another layer, go back to our colours, and we've got an even brighter and warmer version now. We're going to have it down in the 2% size, the top end of 2%, and I'm just going to start separating some shapes in this area. So again, it's reflecting, picking up some of the textures in some of the clouds. And you do get this sense of long, flattened shapes, but then as you get a bit, a little bit higher up, it's just, again, just going to pick up on the underside of some of these clouds, especially in this area, where we're going to do the concentration of light. In addition to that, I'm also going to turn the brush to 15%, turn it low to 5% opacity. I'm just going to do a few large gestures like this. I know it's very subtle, but it just increases the sense of glow to that whole area then. Turn it back down again. 2%, turn it back up to about 15%, and I can just start ramping up some of this brightness now in this area. We're going to have a concentration here in the center area. Okay, so on this top layer, in addition, I'm going to go back to that first bright blue color that we used. We're still going to stay on the soft brush, 2% size and 15% opacity. And I feel like, actually we'll move back a layer. We'll move back to layer five and we'll do it on this layer. So with the settings I've just shown you, underneath some of that warmest glow, I'm just gonna continue the effect of some of those gaps just underneath that. So you're still gonna get that warm glow that is dominating, but then we're gonna continue the, the notion that there are breaks and gaps in that cloud as well. So I don't wanna do too much of that. Perhaps I'll just turn that up a little bit to 3% and down even more. So about 5% and I'll just keep it quite soft focus really. And just a hint of that I think works quite nicely. So we're going to create another layer and on this layer we're going to use this time the medium brush. Go back to our colours and we're going to use the first colour on the bottom row which is quite a nice dark moody blue colour and with this we're going to put it at 3% size and about 80% opacity. And I'm just going to pick a point underneath all the clouds that we've done because I don't want to obscure them on all the nice things we've got there but I'm creating a lumpy and bumpy area and then I just drag into that bottom section. Now you can see it's flood filled too much so I just by holding onto the pencil I can push it back and if you get a horrible edge like that you could get rid of that by using the, the hard brush but it doesn't really matter because you can go to the smudge and it's set on medium I've got it accurate and well above 50%, even at 100%, you could then just smudge it together like this. It doesn't need to be neat because we're looking for texture in this background area. So I'm just mushing it all together a little bit. And it's quite helpful if it creates some of this texture for you by doing this, it makes your life a little bit easier, in fact. And I'm just going to now, along this edge, start to push it up more precisely. So I'm going to make sure it's at the lower end of 2%, perhaps put the strength of this smudge down to about 80%, and I'm gonna push it up in places to create almost like a, a top edge of a tree line, features in the distance, so we don't want it to look too much like a brush edge, really. We want to keep it looking like an actual landscape. Some bits you may get a flattening out, and that's fine. But then in other areas, you're going to get a collection of lumps and bumps that just sells it as being something on the horizon line. So 
and most of this is going to be obscured over this side I think anyway but we'll do just one or two there might be some breaks where we can see it so it doesn't take a moment just to create some lumps and sticking out features we can always go in back in and refine it if there's yeah if more of it is visible we can just go in and refine it but that's the general sense uh, we'll just turn that up a little bit to more like three percent and we'll just mush in some of that if it seems like it's standing out too much then I'm going to take that layer by pressing on the N and just turn that opacity down to well 100% is too dark but I'm going to turn it down to about 90% initially and I think that works a little bit better in the context then I'm going to create another layer go back to my colors and we've got a lighter color now so we're going to use that with the soft brush again and we're going to put that at around the 3% size but low on the opacity at about 5% and I'm just going to in fact that's too low put it back up to about 10% we're just going to build in some of this color knock it back a little bit especially in that center area where we've got the, the warmer color we want to just redefine some of those edges a little bit more now just be careful try not to go over the top of this horizon line if you do it isn't the end of the world we can just go in there with an eraser and just remove some of that and I'm just going to increase the size of the brush to about 10% I'm just going to have some of that glow coming down in this central area first subtle but it's there then I'll go to the eraser and it's still set on the soft brush but it's quite inaccurate because it's a 2% size but we'll turn it up on the strength to about 60% and if you have like I've done just been a bit clumsy there on that top edge just go in and, and redefine that edge just remove some of that overspilling color it's not a big deal just to get rid of it okay so we're going to create another layer go back to our colors and I've got this third color in now which you can see we're going to use it with a soft brush we're going to use it about the 4% size and about 40% opacity and we're just going to start creeping some of this color in especially as it gets a little bit further away and further down just bring it in here allow it to create streaks in the landscape so staying on that same leg back to our colors I'm going to skip a few colors we've got this color a little bit further along I'm going to use that now again on the soft brush at around 3% size I'm going to turn it down on the opacity to about 20% and we're just going to start building in a light color here and we've got almost really some more foreground grass and fields so we're starting to see some of this lighter green effect coming through again it's a really optical illusion there's no green in there whatsoever it's all within the blue it's very strange what colors do but there you go and then we'll just from that edge allow that color to sort of fade in and merge down a little bit so I'm just reserving that top edge for the lighter green and then have it become more broken up as it comes further down okay I think I want to just perhaps create a separation there so I'm just going to merge some of that up there a little bit and we've got like a little section now that's sticking out in fact I'll further refine that we'll create another layer go back to our colors go to this fourth color in and I'm going to use this color now with a small brush at 2%, 20% opacity and I'm just going to build in some features here that I want to stand out a little bit more. We don't need to worry about defining them too much. Just a sense that there's something else coming in here. And I'm just going to let it trail off. And jumping forward we're going to have another section here. I'm going to start creating some ground level shapes again we're still on the soft brush in fact let's change that we'll go to the medium brush let's see if we can just with the medium brush at 2% and about 40% strength just start to create some sharper details here we'll go over it with the darker color as well but we'll just get the shapes in initially so we're creating some slightly more foreground well it's middle distance really shapes from which we're going to do some trees growing and 
I'll just increase the size of the brush to 4%, turn that opacity down to about 5% again, and just start to shade that in. Let it merge in a little bit more. I'm going to create another layer, and on this layer, I'm going to go to my darkest color, which is this black, and using the medium brush still, with more accurate, lower end of 2%, almost in the 1%, just nudged up into the 2% slightly. I'm going to put the strength at about 50%, and I'm going to start introducing some trees. In fact, that, that might be a little bit thick for the trunk, so I'm going to nudge it down ever so slightly to the top end of 1%, and I'm just going to allow it to create my tree trunks, allow them to branch up across the land and up into the sky area. You don't need to define them too much, they're just going to be the basis that we're going to add some foliage and extra things. So like that for example, that's the good enough to then go to the artistic brushes and the hearts. And with this brush, it's set to around 2%. Let's just double check that. That seems to work pretty well. So about 2% and about 70% opacity. So it still has a little bit of translucency and variation. We can use this now just to start adding some broken texture. Some really rough and loose foliage. You really don't need to be precise with this. So it's going to be quite a bit more random. And the more branches you have, obviously, the more foliage it's going to be able to hold. So you've maybe got some branches low down that you just can't quite see, but you can see the foliage. And when you zoom in, it is a little bit sharp, a little bit ugly, so it's very easy to fix. We can go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we can just blur it in a little bit just to soften the edge, and it does help, but we'll do that a little bit later on. So alternate now between the airbrushing medium brush, where I'm going to be adding the tree trunks at that 1%. Now it is a much darker tone than the, the ground, so we are going to go back in there and, and darken up that ground as well. But let's just get the tree trunks in first. We're going to have a real collection of trees. Obviously we're going to have them a little bit thicker at the bottom. In fact, We'll also start to add the, the tone for the ground. We may as well do that at the same time. So I'll put that up to 2% and low on the opacity at about 15%. And I'm just going to start building in some extra dark tone here so it matches with the trees and it doesn't look strange. But let's tone it down a little bit. So the lower end of 2%. Certainly for the top edge of it anyway. By the time we've come across, then maybe we can increase it up and we're still on the medium brush so let's change that we'll put it on the soft brush just to soften it in and we'll have that at the about three percent and again about twenty percent so quite low and we'll just allow that to soften in a little bit it's like shading it in we're going to add some darker tones over here as well so again just further define that top edge perhaps so it matches the trees Then we're going to go back to the artistic and the hearts and I'm going to further add some of this texture. So it's saved the setting it was on, which was 2% size and 70% opacity. So you can just really go for it now. We've got all the tree trunks in place, so you're going to have a little bit of texture at the bottom. But obviously you're going to have larger clusters of it at the top. So again, back in with the airbrushing and medium brush just to define some of those tree trunks back in, just to tidy them up if it's needed. So that will do for the trees on that side. And I'm going to add some features over here as well. So we'll stay on the same layer. Using the soft brush initially, I'm going to have it on 2% size and 20% opacity. And we're just going to start building in feature over here. 
Now I want it to be slightly more background, so it needs to be a little bit higher up than that point. So perhaps I've gone a little bit low there. So let's just keep it a little bit higher up. Now I don't want to join up with that. It's a little bit more further forward than there. Perhaps I could have it just creeping up a little bit of height. And we're not going to notice too much in the way of tree trunks for this. So I'll go straight to the Hearts brush but I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 40%. So we're going to keep it at the 2% size and I'm just going to build in some similar textures here. I can always go back in and just add a couple of tree trunks if I need to. And I'll probably go in and soften that a little bit as well. In fact, let's use a combination of the black and that purple that we had over here that we used for this. But I think combining it the black over in this section so we're getting slightly more of a misty version of those trees is actually going to work better for us and i'm just going to perhaps just get some slight really distant sort of trees suggested in there perhaps just in the background too so they haven't got any black mixed with that color for the background it's just the pure purple but then I'm going to sharpen up this black. So we will go back to the black. And I'll turn the opacity up to 60%. And I'm still using that textured brush. And I'll just create just a bit more definition here. And then it merges with that misty effect. Perhaps just a little something there sticking up as well. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. Go back to my colors. And I've used pretty much all of the colors. But we're going to go back in just to exaggerate some of the effects. We've got this lighter colour, this lighter purpley colour. And using the airbrushing and soft brush, we're going to put it down to about 2% size and low on the opacity at around 10%. And I'm just going to start bringing in some more of this, maybe just soften some of that where it blends together. Bring in some more of a kind of a mist effect. And we're going to turn that up again to about 8% size and I'm just going to perhaps just further exaggerate the sense of mist, go over a little bit. Maybe I'll just soften it in at this top edge as well. You see you've got this colour here. So instead of adding this colour, what I'll do is I'll go back to where that edge is. So which layer was it? I think it was layer, there we go, layer 7 is where that colour is. So I'll go back to that layer and we'll go to our eraser put it on the soft brush, which it is, which is great. Put it at about 4% size and really low on the opacity. So about 5% opacity. And I can just start to remove that a little bit and just soften it in. And I think that as well is gonna start adding to the, the general kind of mist effect. So I'm gonna to go to my top layer again, create another layer, back to my colors. And I'm going to use combinations of these colors now to create some more foreground layers and textures and details. I may even throw in a sprinkling of these lighter colors just to pick out highlights. But I'm going to start with the black and this dark gray color as well. So I'll start with the dark gray one first. And on the soft brush, I'm going to keep this quite soft focus. So we'll put it at about 3% size and about 20% opacity. And I just want to start building in some extra softening, maybe some extra tone down here as well. The more we've now shut down some of this light, the more it's going to sell this glow and this illumination over in this side. So I'm going to bring some darker tones down into this bottom part. And allow it to develop a stripe so you can see I'm doing it quite quickly. It really helps actually, I think that you often do get these sense of lines that are cut across. Reduce the size of that brush to about 2% and maybe just a bit more precisely start to add some streaks across here as well. So on this same layer, I'm just going to go to this in fact, we'll go up a colour. We'll use this light pink, in fact, but we're going to have to really turn it down. So I'm going to turn it down to about 5% with the soft brush and about 2% size. And on this top layer, I'm just going to add 
I sense that this light is just feeding down into this bit and just picking up on areas in this, in this part. Maybe there's just some tufts that it catches the light of, or the tufts rather catch the light, I should say. It's quite impressionistic, this. You don't need to go too far into the detail, just creating the effect, and I think that can actually be more effective than spending an agonizingly large amount of time with details. And sometimes you sit back and you think, well, the effect was, you know, worked, but then the details have ruined it. So you need to find that balance. And still on the same layer, we're going to go to this black color, still on the soft brush at 2% size. And I'm going to turn it up to about 20% opacity. And I'm going to start building in increasingly some texture and tufts and just little features that you might notice in the field. It might be a molehill, whatever really. It doesn't need to be super obvious what it is. I'm going to turn the opacity down and actually it's a bit strong. I'm going to put it at 10%. Start to build in some lumps and bumps and features. And if you want to spend ages getting some nice individual kind of stones and things like that, then that could be really good. Your imagination is really great at filling in those gaps and interpreting something as being something that you know so I can just do a blob and you interpret it as a, a rock or a tuft and it's in reality I'll just quickly lay down a blob or a dash or whatever. But if you want to just add one or two really prominent features, so I'm just turning it up to about 20% si uh, strength and 2% size, maybe you could just add one or two slightly more prominent features, maybe like a rock or two. So I'll just turn the opacity up for this, make an extra dark silhouette. So it's just sticking up a little bit more. Whatever works. And in addition to that, we could also perhaps just take one of the brighter colors. So like this warm, vibrant color, turn it low to about 2% size and really low to about 5% opacity and just hint perhaps that it's reflecting some of that light back. You want to be very careful with that because if you, you add a little bit too much, it just looks silly. And that's almost too much really. I'll just wind that back a little bit and maybe just have that slightly more fragmented reflection of some of that light in different places too. So I'm going to create another layer and I have actually added another color here because I just decided that I wanted to add a little bit more of a glow into this area. So that's what I've done. Um, I've using the soft brush, put it at around 3% size and 10% opacity. And I'm just going to gently nudge it a little bit in areas just in this center area, just towards the slight orange, but I'm really not doing much of that at all. And that will do. And you can see the effect with or without, you know, you, you might decide that it, it doesn't need it in your landscape and that's absolutely fine. Going back to this tree layer, it doesn't look very nice as it is. So I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur and just nudge it in a little bit more softly. So I'm going to put it at about 2% Gaussian blur and it just looks a bit better when it's close up then. Maybe with that light pink, last couple of touches, I'm just going to go to the bottom here and just add a little bit more of that light pink at the very bottom of our horizon line there, just to slightly ramp up the brightness, just as it hits that land. And I'm going to pick that color at the very end too. And again, this is all on the soft brush, 2% size and 10% opacity. Just tease in a couple of breaks in the, the cloud as well. Just really delicate touches of it though. We don't dramatically want to change anything. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed following along or just watching. If you do have a go, make sure to share it with me. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure to do that and, and press the like button as well. It really helps out the channel and it makes sure that you get to see these things in the future as well. Hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.